G'day everyone, welcome back to another episode. Today we're gonna to continue work on the army trailer. In the last episode, we made this swing out tailgate and we didn't really get to finish it off. There's also a lot of other videos that we've done that we haven't really finished off, if that makes sense. So today's episode is about finishing all the stuff that we haven't finished in the other videos that we have already finished. Let's go, I think. All right, so today's episode is about finishing all the stuff we haven't finished. One thing I did finish this morning is I have fully welded this up, so it is ready to go. If you guys remember in the last episode, I didn't have enough gas. I did go to Bunnings, refilled the gas, and now I finished it. So I've just done like five stitch welds on each side, and I also have stitch welded all the mounts back to the frame, and then I've done stitch welds under here as well. While we got the trailer turned this way, I do want to just completely finish this rear end, except for this dint. I'm not going to be able to do anything about that dint today, but... I do want to fix that. So what I need to do first is actually make these little square tops so we can fully weld that and then shape it so it looks nice and neat and that is not a gaping hole anymore. And then I want to remove all of this sort of stuff. So I want to remove this bar here and cut this off. Because believe it or not, we're actually almost at the stage of actually painting the trailer itself. I want to get all the prep done, get it ready so that when it comes down to painting, we're going to have a nice time doing it. Now, all these little nicks that I've done with the grinder, I'm going to have to boggle them up and make them all look nice and pretty because otherwise the paint will show them. Now some other things we have to do is finish the infill panels and also do a bit of rust work. There's also a hole that was all rusted out there that I really need to patch. While the trailer is flipped this way, I will be starting on the back section first. I'll quickly make the plates and then we can move on to the bottom of the trailer. So let's get into it, start the time lapse. <laughs> Righto, that is our first job done. They are plated and all nicely rounded off and flat back. I did actually bridge this gap. That was a bit of a hole before, so I just bridge welded that. And that turned out really nice as well. It just sort of tidies it up a bit. You can see when it shuts now, that is perfectly level. I did grind it down so it was dead straight with the top. So our seal on the top is gonna work. A thousand times better, all plated off, so. Now, moving on to this bottom section. I'm actually gonna cut this off cut this off. I might leave these little rings just because I'll never ever be able to get something back in there. But I'll cut that off, cut that off. I have no idea what I'm doing with this old pintle hitch here at the moment. Still figuring out if I want to chop that off and add a recovery point or just chop it off and leave it off. I'm not really sure. I will be taking these lights off but keeping the mount behind it just so I can mount my new lights to it. So yeah, the next job is to just basically strip this bottom section off. All right, all right, I know what I said about a pintle hitch and keeping it, but I did just get carried away and I cut the bastard off. Pintle hitch, absolutely gone on the ground right there. I do actually have a pretty good plan with that hole. I am gonna turn this into a recovery point and um, I think it's gonna look actually pretty good. Instead of having this big dildo that hits the tailgate, 
I'm gonna have a little recovery point. So I'm gonna quickly start modifying all this into what I have in my head. And once I get down to a point where I can show you guys, I'll fill you in. But for now, it's a bloody secret, but I gotta go cut this up and make a recovery point happen on the back. One eternity later. All right, so that just took me literally about an hour to get to this point, but we had our pin tool hitch. I cut it. I then cut it again to get the center out because it was actually a welded center in there. Then I've cut a square in this. This is now what I was chasing out of the actual pin tool hitch. So I flap that back. I cut a square in it. Now that is gonna go like that onto the back. So this is a recovery tow ball hitch that you would typically put in your tow ball and um, you would then recover off your tow ball. Now, what I can do, is stick that through there. I think that's pretty good. That was the idea I had. I actually was grinding. I looked over to the side where I had it stored. I thought, oh, that might be a bloody good idea. And I think it is a bloody good idea. So what my main plan would be is to put that through and center it and actually weld it from the back and then put it in and weld it from the front. And the reason that I wanna do that is because when you're recovering, to pull a weld through this plate, you would have to be putting some bloody force on it. But if, say, if you just butt welded that to the end like that, it's not that much force to actually knock that weld off. But from the back, full welds are in the back, and then from the front, we full weld. So I'm gonna to get to welding this, and then we can get it on. I can show you guys the finished product, but I'm freaking pumped about this. Yeah, that was my idea, guys. Let me know what you think. I think that's much better than that pin tool hook because realistically, you can only use that pin tool hook for recovery these days anyway. There's no way I'd be allowed to tow anything off that. So it was a bit of a waste and because this is gonna be our kitchen sort of area, uh, it was gonna get in the way anyway. And also, the door hit it, which means that this now doesn't hit at all, which is bloody mint. So I'm just gonna fill those little grinding marks real quick with the welder, and then while she's hot, I'll chuck some paint on it. All right, all painted up, looking bloody mint. I think that turned out sick. I'm super pumped with that, and I'm super pumped that we can actually open that without it scraping on the pin tool hitch. And another massive advantage is when you're actually using this trailer, walking past, if you bump your kneecap on that old pin tool hitch, I'd end up burning this thing to the ground and all this work would be for nothing. As for metal work, the rear of the trailer is actually completely done. The only thing I do need to do now is go through and boggle my little grinding marks and also just silicon or sikaflex these little gaps. But for the most part, the rear is actually completely done. Some of the other things I wanted to get done today are this rust hole and actually welding my little gussets on here. I have fully decided that I am not cutting out these wheel arches. I just feel like if I couldn't fit all all my camping stuff inside this trailer then I'm doing something wrong or I'm taking too much gear. Camping to me is kind of being a minimalist. You shouldn't need every single thing that you own out camping and I don't really need the space and I just don't see the point in actually cutting them out just to gain a little bit of space so I'm definitely not going to cut them out and I know it's kind of a cheat's way out but I am just going to plate those corners there. I did want to get that done today but we are actually out of time. I can't keep grinding at six o'clock right now so I can't keep grinding and welding but I will probably keep this episode going till tomorrow or Sunday. Today's Friday. In this episode I at least want to get this whole patch these plates welded in and the actual front wall completely welded. So unfortunately there is a lot of grinding and welding left and I'm very sorry about it, but it has to be done to get this trailer done and I have to film it because otherwise there'll be no content. So sorry for the slow, boring, welding, grinding, cutting content, but I think once this is done, we're pretty close to actually painting it. And um, once my aluminum top's done, I just bolt that on, put a tent on, wire it up, set it up, and then we're out camping. So guys, you'll probably see me in a couple of days and we'll keep cracking on with this, but for now, I'll catch you later. All right, it is the next morning. I've actually already started work. So what I've done is I've cut three tie down hooks off each side. They were sort of like this. 
I've cut them off and ground them flat so they are ready to be bogged up. I've also ran the wire wheel right along this uh, rusty seam here where the old guard was. Some of that rust was actually starting to get pretty bad so I'm glad that we are doing this sort of mod. So the mud guard is now ready to be fully welded on and seam sealed. The other thing I quickly done is cut this piece out because we have a big rot hole. I don't know if you guys can see that, it might be a bit dark. But that piece is going to be welded in. I actually cut that out prior to putting these mud guards on because I knew it was going to be hard to get to. So I'm bloody glad I've done that. So what I'm going to quickly do is weld that plate in there. And that means that I'm then ready to plate each side. Now I'm not sure how I'm going to plate it yet. I'll probably just end up doing some tack welds and then we can seam seal it again. I also have lifted the box off just to get this sort of ready. I'm going to leave all these tie down hooks and this thing here, whatever that is, at the front. I'm just going to leave all that because I can only actually sit the toolbox as flat as that anyway so they're tucked away and you won't even see them regardless. So as you can see, second day we're in the same Roman Life T again. Now these things handle the sparks and the weld so freaking well. You're grinding, welding, flapping, all that sort of stuff and it's hitting the shirt and there's not even a mark on it so we got the mint quality boys. So one thing I've been doing as well in this video and the OG fabricators will actually know about this is a face mask. Now I've been cutting and grinding a lot of steel on this build and last week I actually didn't wear a face mask at all and I felt so shit. I'm wearing these things non-stop now when I'm grinding and welding. You can already see the filter was white. Now it's already brown. And last night after working on this, hopped in the shower, had no black stuff coming out my nose where normally I blow my nose and I get metal all over my hand. It's actually disgusting how much you, your body breathes in, but these things, have been clutch. So I'm putting the word out to all you young fabricators that want to get into it. Trust me, wear a mask. It is friggin' mint. So as you can see here, we've got those plates welded in. I also managed to sort that rust hole out. That was pretty major. And we are looking pretty good. Don't mind these holes in here. I just can't be bothered filling them up with weld. I am gonna be running sick flex basically through that gap and it'll smooth out all these welds. I promise you it'll look really good once it's done. Now up here where it's actually joined the body, we will be skim filling with bog and smoothing out. Another thing that I actually done is just made this level. It was actually just a little bit tilted up. So I cut it off again and redone it and just made it nice and level now. So that looks a thousand times better. And I am thinking about running the, I'm definitely thinking about running the disc grinder and putting it basically up to that mark just so it goes down to a point, just so we don't have this little edge right here. I think that'll look quite good too, but she's looking bloody mint. All right, so as you can see, it's dark behind me, but we're at the final stage, finally. I just had a massive clean up. It's amazing how much metal dust you actually grind off something. This floor was covered. I had four piles of metal dust all around. So what I've done off camera is I've gone through and just grinded everything to a nice shoulder. The reason that I welded on the outside here is so I could actually grind that into a nice little seam just like it is. And it kind of just looks like it was never actually cut off. So that is bloody beautiful. Also grinded the top and I stitch welded all inside and I've painted. So you can see that black stuff around the corners there and that is actually underbody lining. 
I wanted to get that down in this crease here just so I can help prevent rust actually forming in that crease because I am about to seam seal over the top of that. So I thought that was a good idea. So the stage we're at now is I'm actually gonna run beads of Sikaflex right around the trailer. Now I have left gaps under here that I won't be sick of flexing. That's just so water can actually escape out somewhere. Yeah, we basically need to sick of flex right around here. Obviously right down the front to make this water tight. And I do, if I get enough, I want to actually go right around this perimeter here. And I have actually added some stitches on the back just to reinforce that sheep. Bloody hell, it's taken some time to get to this point, but I'm so stoked to be here. Time for the seam sealer. Now I have actually shown this trick before, but what you do to make your silicone job neat is you fill it up like that. And if you left it like that, it would look like crap. So what you do is you spray it with soapy water, go over the top, spray the whole thing. And what that does is stops the Sikaflex actually sticking to anywhere but where it is now because you're actually soaking the rest of the metal in soap. And then you soak your finger as well and you smooth it out. It gives you like a perfect little finger groove. You could use like something like a trowel or something like that, but you're better off just using your finger, bit of soapy water. You could use spit or other body fluids, I guess, but um, soapy water works the best. Now you're gonna wanna have a fair few rags, but as you can see, she's quite messy at the moment. So you go through, give it a nice spray. Like I said, what that does is actually stops it sticking to the outside. So now what I'm gonna do is spray my finger and just go through just lightly. I don't know if you guys can see that, but it is nice and smooth into those corners and you end up with a really, really nice finish. Now, Sikaflex Pro is actually paintable and sandable, so don't stress about getting these little bits up on the side. It's not really gonna matter once it's all painted. Yeah, that is one side done. So time to do the other side and also the whole tub and also the whole back. Got a lot of Sikaflex in to do. So I'll chuck you guys on a time lapse and I'll get it done now. Then I can finally go to bed. Mid. We're actually finally done for the night. The Sikaflex is all finished. As you guys can see there, it turned out really, really nice. I did load the shit out of it in there because there's a couple pit holes up against this wall here of um, rust. So I just filled them with Sikaflex because every time I tried to weld it, it would just get even bigger. So that's done. I also done around the back of the picture frame. So that is fully sealed as well. We are fully sealed up. This thing should just about hold water once that's, that rear seal's on. I'm absolutely cheering with the progress for the weekend. I think I smashed out quite a fair bit, even though it might not look like it. The welding, grinding, flap disking, sealing takes friggin' ages. Now I do have a couple of little things to go. I do need to pop rivet that back on. I also do need to do a jerry can holder and a gas bottle holder. And then we're just about ready to bog, sand, paint, and then camp. No, not camp. We actually have so much more to do than that, but I'm getting too excited. So that's all we got time for tonight. If you want to grab one of our shirts, link is in the description. Thanks for watching. As always, you're a bunch of legends, and I'll catch you on the next episode.